everything seems to be nice and tight, straight, level, aligned, all that good stuff. Hello everybody. So, today we're starting slamming the lawnmower. Not today today, because today is the beginning of January, but when I started making this video back in late November, I had every intention to just knock it out real quick, edit it, upload it, and be done with it, and this took way longer than I would have ever guessed. So instead of having one full length video that would eventually end up being about two to two and a half hours long, I'm gonna break this up into more digestible pieces and I'll do it in 25, 30, 35 minute segments and I'll break it up, upload it as I'm going. I still have a little bit more work to do on it. So without further ado, here's part one of Slamming the Lawn Mower. I hope you enjoy. So here's our hot ugly mess for right now. We got just about everything stripped down to the frame. The last thing I'm going to need to do is take the pulley assembly off and our blade height adjustment assembly off. Once those are off we'll be down to bare frame and we can start messing with the axle. The idea is to unbolt the axle, flip it around, spin it around, and then hook our belts back up and our pulley be on the same plane that it currently is but on the underside of the axle and spun around. That should keep our wheels turning in the same direction. We should have the same six forward gears, one reverse gear. It'll just be lower. Well we got our clutch and transmission shift linkage disassembled in a pile on the floor. It was about four or five bolts holding it to the frame and two linkages. The next thing I'm going to do is get the blade height adjustment assembly off the frame and then we'll remove our idler pulley assembly right there. That's going to open up the frame rails and let us get all this wiring harness out of the way and we're going to pressure wash this thing down. Now that we got our blade height adjustment assembly and our idler pulley assembly off of there, the next thing we're taking off is our entire brake assembly. So the brake lever and also the chain that goes back to our caliper. After that, we're gonna get the belt off of the engine and then start taking the wiring harness off. The last thing I do before I roll this thing outside and give it a good hosing down is going to be removing the engine. We got four bolts on the four corners of the engine. Get those out of there. This thing should just pick up and pop right out. There we go. We got a stripped down frame. Nothing left but the transmission, the front axle, and a lot of grease. We're gonna roll this bad boy outside and then spray it down with the pressure washer.
All right, we got our frame rinsed off back up here on the table. I'm gonna pull the rear axle out from under it. The brackets that the rear axle mounts to look like I might be able to just unbolt them, flip them upside down and bolt them back on. And we're gonna see where our axle sits and where the frame sits in relation to it. And we'll go from there. These right here are the brackets I was talking about, and it has three holes mounting it to the frame, but it also has a fourth mystery hole, and I think if I unbolt this, I should be able to flip it upside down, and this hole will be where this bolt is, but our flanges will be higher up, so when we mount our transmission upside down, it'll make it sit a lot higher up in the frame. We'll try it out to see what happens. Lines up. Good start. All right, let's throw the axle up there and see what happens. So as you can see, we're on the right track. Our pulley is down inside the channel, but it's still about three or four inches too low into the frame. So we're going to need to raise these brackets up about three or four inches and that should line everything back up on our pulleys. That's the perfect height I need to align my rear pulley with my engine pulley. So I just need to take this height and adjust these brackets so that they sit that much farther lower. And that is two and an eighth inches. So I need these brackets to come down two and one eighth inches. So what I'm gonna do is measure two and an eighth inches up from the bottom of my bracket make a mark on the frame right here so when I unbolt this I can scoot it up to where it needs to be and weld it in place. Same thing on this side. Now I can unbolt these brackets, shift them up to where they need to be, weld them in place, and then slap our rear axle back on there. All right, now we'll get the other side tacked on, mock everything up, make sure it's right, and do a full weld. All right, got them both tacked up. We'll throw our rear axle on there, mock everything up, make sure it all lines up in the lines. The lines. And then we'll pull it back off and throw a full bead on there. Well, right off the bat, I see two small problems. One, we need to get rid of that hitch section of the rear frame. And the second issue is our shift linkage is very, very close to the frame right here. I can still shift it, but it does rub. So we'll have to shorten this shaft up to get it inside the frame channel. The first problem I'm gonna attack is getting rid of this hitch section. I should be able to just draw a line even with the frame rail and just go all the way around and it'll just fall right off. The rest of it will stay bolted up. Last 
check, make sure everything fits up right. Make sure my tires can touch the table. And we'll be set. And we'll pop it back off, put a full bead on those brackets, and then do a final bolt up. All right, we got this thing just about as low as we can get it. This back end will come up a couple inches when we let the front down, but for right now it looks pretty good. All right, let's pull the axle off one more time, weld all the brackets up, and get it bolted back on. We got our first issue solved and done. Now we need to shorten the height of this shift linkage. Right now it's bumping up against the bottom side of the frame. So we need to drop it down about two inches to get it up inside the frame. Give that a shot, see how it works. All right, there's the finished product on the flipped rear axle. Got our brackets welded up on all sides. Our pulley seems aligned right inside the frame. Our shift linkage has been shortened to where it sits inside the frame rails. I think now we're ready to start working on the front end. So I've seen a lot of different ways of lowering the front end on these lawn tractors. As of right now, I don't have a solid plan, but I'm gonna unbolt everything that attaches our front axle to the frame, get that out of the way so I can lower my frame down to level, and then figure out where everything needs to bolt or weld back up to the frame. Right off the bat, there's a couple of issues I'm going to deal with, one being our steering linkages and the other was the mower blade engage that we had turned into our brake lever. So we'll have to get both of these out of there and then we'll trim the front end of the frame down so that it'll all sit at the same level. As you can see, I got the frame sitting on a 2x4 at the front, but we are just about perfectly level all the way back, inch and 5 eighths. So now, I need to figure out how to get that put back on there at this height. One minute, 37 seconds later. I've got an idea. So I got my axle pivot point that I cut off the front to lower it down and I got it resting on another 2x4 so that it sits level with the rest of the frame. 
and that is basically going to be my main mounting point for the front axle and what I'm going to do is take some of this quarter by two flat bar and it'll be welded to this bracket and then welded to this pivot pivot point and on the axle side I'm going to take that same quarter by two flat bar and I'll cut my axle tubing weld the flat bar onto the center piece and then slide this up and then weld it onto this bar then I'll put two gussets in that corners to keep everything firm and theoretically I should be able to trim down this other half of the pivot point get all this bottom stuff out of the way and still use my hood pivot so let's start chopping it up and see how it goes so as you can see we got our axle cut into three pieces this is going to be the center piece that will mount to our pivot point and our flat strap is going to run on the outsides of this up to our steering knuckles which are going to sit somewhere around probably right there so let's get our pivot point mounted onto the frame over here then we can slide our axle back in there and start putting everything back together I got the paint cleared off on a couple spots on the side of the frame here where I'm going to weld these brackets on. I'm going to weld these on first and then I'll set up my pivot point, make sure that's all level and square with the frame, then put some more tacks on it. front pivot point all ground down. I actually cut the bottom side off and I wasn't supposed to, but I'll be able to bolt it up to this plate, sandwich it on there, put a tack and weld it back where it's supposed to be. Theoretically. We'll see how that goes. But for now, let's get the actual sandwiched in there and just see where we're at. So after getting the center part of our front axle bolted up, I realized that it's missing the structure on the top here. It's really only the bottom and the bolts going through the axle that are holding everything together. And the ones that go through aren't supposed to be tight. They don't really hold tension. They just help keep the axle from going crazy. So what I'm gonna do is take this scrap piece that I cut off, I'm gonna weld it onto the back side of the pivot point and then also weld it onto the front side over here. Alright, 
let's see where our knuckle needs to sit. Our tire will be just like so. I got my axle tube level, and this is perpendicularly level. That's a thing, I think. It's perpendicular to the axle tube. So I just need to make another one this size. Then, roll my knuckle over, and weld it right up. Before I weld this all the way up, I'm going to have to take this spindle out, take the plastic bushings out so they don't melt when this heats up. But for now it's fine, and I got full motion on my spindle. Not bad. Everything tacked up where it needs to be on both sides. I'm going to use the rest of this quarter by two flat strap to cut some gussets, some long gussets that are going to go from almost all the way at the top down to about two inches out.
There we go. Got it all tacked up. Two gussets on each side. Almost all the way to the top. Still got a fully functioning pivoting axle. Everything should be A-OK. -okay. Now I just need to take the bushings out of those spindles. Put a full bead down everything. And start slapping this thing back together. Everything is fully welded. I went all the way around top and bottom on the axle connections. I did two welds on the long side of each gusset, one weld on the bottom side of each gusset. Everything seems to be nice and tight, straight, level, aligned, all that good stuff. Next step is figure out my steering. I do have full motion on my knuckle. No issues with clearance there. So I just need to figure out how to get my steering linkage from there down to this steering plate. And what I'm thinking, I'm probably gonna have to cut a hole in the side of the frame right here and just reinforce around it and have my steering linkage come out of the middle of the frame right there. Well, that's gonna do it for the first video. If you like what you see, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, subscribe so you don't miss anything and I'll see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bad.